Praise the Lord. Are you tired? Day number five. And the Lord will do great, unforgettable things in your life in Jesus' name. Today is going to be wonderful. Wonderful in my life. Wonderful in my life. Wonderful in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Almighty God, the God that changes not, and the God that loves his people, the God who responds to his people. We're asking tonight, you will do great, wonderful, unforgettable thing in every life in Jesus' name. Those who are here, everyone without exception. Those who are online, over the radio, over the television, anywhere and everywhere in the world, I pray, Lord, you do wonders in every life today. Amen. Subdue the enemy. Amen. Lift up the name of Christ. Amen. And bless all your people tonight in a way it will be unforgettable. I well, thank you because we know it is none. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A good, good amen before you sit down. An amen that reaches the throne of God. Amen. amen in your life. And may the angels join their voices saying amen for you too in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can sit down. We're still on redemption. Full redemption. Total redemption. Free redemption. And final redemption. Tonight, we want to go on the right journey. Let's say you are here. And redemption is over there. And you need to move because redemption is there. I will not move for you, but you will walk and go in the direction of that redemption. And if you see the path and the way and the road, as I explained to you from the word today, and you take step, step after step, you'll reach there. I will reach there. there. Tonight I'm talking to you on the right road to individual impartial redemption. Redemption available for everyone without exception because our God is an impartial God. He has created everyone. He loves everyone. And he wants to bring redemption to every life. And we need to know the right road that leads to that redemption. There are people that take the wrong road. And they've been traveling on that road, the road of religion, the road of self-effort, the road of self-salvation. And there's nothing like that. And because they're on that wrong road, they never reach. They never get there. That's the reason why we need to block that wrong road and then open the gate to the right road that leads you to that redemption. The right road to individual and impartial redemption. Look at Luke chapter 1. In Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed 
his people. Look at verse 69 there. Verse 69, he has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. Verse 70 says, as he spake, everything he does, as he spake, he started speaking about this redemption in Genesis from chapter 3. As he spake, and he came to Exodus, and he spoke about the redemption. When I see the blood, he came to Leviticus, and he said, the blood is given for the atonement. It is as he has spoken. And then he spoke in numbers, and he said, lift up the serpent. And everyone that looks on that serpent, he says, they will receive life. Deuteronomy says, if you hear hearken to the word that he has said, and that you will obey his word indeed, he says, all these blessings of redemption will follow after you. He will lift you up. You will not be tail. Okay, let me say it for myself. I will not be tail. You will be head in Jesus' name. And it goes on and on till the end of the old covenant. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been from the world since the world began. Then in verse 71, it says that we shall be saved. That's our redemption. Tonight, you'll be saved. Amen. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all, from the hands of all that hate us. Those who hate you, they will not have the final say in your life. Of course, you yourself too, where there is hatred, you must be planting love and peace and gentleness in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. There's too much hatred in the world already. And you will not add to the hatred in the world. You will bring peace. You will be an instrument of peace in Jesus' name. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Verse 72 talks about to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Verse 73, it tells us the oath which is swear to our father Abraham. In verse 74, that he would deliver, would grant us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. When you become redeemed and the redemption of the Lord comes to you tonight, every fear is banished out of your life. The fear of the powers of darkness, the fear of tribal hatred, enmity against your life, and the fear of the light, let me use this language, quenching before you reach the edge of the tunnel. All that fear is taken away from your life. And then in verse 75, it says, In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. I need a good amen there. You know? From Adam and Eve, all the offspring and the descendants of Adam and Eve, virtually everybody, there has not been too many people. You know, we have people like Enoch, like Noah, like Abraham, like Isaac, like Jacob. Like Samuel, 
like Moses, like Daniel, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Few of them, when you consider the billions of people who have lived in the world, only those few were able to live in righteousness and holiness all the days of their lives. The rest were being, you know, crawling. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But new life will come to you. New power will come to you. And a new sense of destiny will come to your life in Jesus' name. Yes. That he will so grant you. He'll still give you the grace, the strength, and the power to live in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of your life. Yes. You missed a good amen there. Yes. And then in verse 76, it says... And thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. Verse 77, to give the knowledge of salvation, knowledge of redemption, knowledge of full redemption unto his people by the remission of their sins. Verse 78, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. 79 now, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Redemption. I said redemption. Full redemption. Where are you? Tonight is coming your way. That redemption is there. And now we're going to talk about the road, the path, the way, the express way. For the individual to get to that impartial redemption. Three things we're looking at. Number one, repentance and faith for remission of all sins. Number two, reconciliation through faith towards recovery from all sicknesses. Recovery, help me shout recovery. From all sicknesses. Check up your life. Check up your body. On the side. In the feet. In the head. In the hand. In the eyes. All sicknesses. It's about time. Enough is enough. They'll pack their load and go. When we mention the name of Jesus. When we talk about his redemption. When we say what he has done. How he has paid the price on the cross of Calvary. Redemption and recovery from all sicknesses. Tonight will be your D-Day. Yeah. Number three, restoration by faith with redemption by the Savior. Let's come to number one. Remember, we're talking about the road, about the path, about the expressway. That leads to redemption, full redemption, free redemption, total redemption. We're looking at Mark chapter 1, verse 14. Mark chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 14. It says, Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching. The gospel of the kingdom of God. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of that good news. Christ never spoke bad news. Any bad news that has come to you, the good news of Christ will replace it tonight. God will take. All the brush 
or the duster or the broom, I don't know, of heaven, and then he'll sweep away every bad news out of your life. Gospel, glad tidings, good news, the good news of the kingdom of God. All the people before Christ came, they were living in the kingdom of Satan, kingdom of darkness, kingdom of sickness, kingdom of paralysis, kingdom of helplessness. And then Christ came, he said, the thief of Satan comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I am come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. That's what you have tonight. What do I have tonight? What do you have tonight? And so he came preaching, proclaiming, declaring the gospel of the kingdom of God. Good, nice, wonderful. How do we get to that? That gladness, that joy, that victory, that redemption in the kingdom of God. Look at verse 15. It tells us very clearly, saying the time is fulfilled. Your time has come. My time has come. It says, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Two things there. Repent. One. And then believe. Number two. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Remember, we're talking on the road that leads to redemption. And, you know, if you're going to walk and move towards any goal, towards any destination, you need your two legs. One, two, one, two, one, two. That's how we get to where we're going. And there are two things there. Repent ye. One, believe. Two, it takes those two, those two things, as you walk on the way, as you move on the way, as you travel on the way, as you make progress on the way, on the way that leads to redemption. One, two, repent, believe. And as you do that, one step after the other, that's how it takes for you to go on that road and to get your redemption. You'll get there tonight. Yeah. I want you to imagine, you know, anybody going anywhere. She's going to the market. He is going to school. He is going to the farm. He lifts up one leg, and then only one leg remains, and he's hopping, hopping. It's not likely to get to where he's going. There are people that do not understand. You need those two legs, put them on the ground, solidly and firmly on the ground, and then take one step after the other. Repent. And believe. There's some people that only talk of repent, repent, repent. That's one leg. Other people talk of believe, believe, believe. That's only one leg. Jesus Christ, the originator of the gospel, the originator of the glad tidings that leads us to the kingdom of God, Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of this kingdom of God, Jesus Christ, 
the Redeemer, the one who has called us out of darkness. And he brings us into the kingdom of the glory of God. He spoke about those two legs. If you're going to walk into the kingdom, repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, what's repent? You know, sometimes, oh, we mentioned it a lot of times, repent, repent, repent. What's repent? Return. You understand that? Refuse whatever Satan has been feeding you with. What's repent? Remove that stumbling block in your life. Sin, evil, transgression iniquity the ways of the world you remove them from your life you renounce everything of darkness you renounce everything of evil that's repent if you don't do that and you just say okay i come i come you come you're not going to get into the kingdom if you don't repent because jesus said repent ye and believe the gospel what's repent are is to return you return from your path of sin e you empty your life of evil life is full of evil life is full of wickedness and you empty your life your tongue from evil your eyes from evil, your hands from evil, your life completely. Anything that is evil, contrary to the word and the will and the way of God, you empty yourself of them. Repent, peel means that you pray and plead for his pardon. You have sinned. You have gone astray, and now you come to the Lord, and you plead for his pardon. You know, you cannot just say, okay, God, I hear that Christ came, and he wants to say, all right, I'm here. You will tell the Lord where you're coming from. What have you been doing? What has your life been? The thing that will destroy your life, the sin the transgression, the iniquity, and the evil. You pray and plead for pardon. E, you eliminate sinful practices. It's like you look at the practice of your life. You look at all the activities of your life. You say, that one is evil. That's an evil practice that hurts other people. That's an evil people, that the evil, evil practice that makes the life of my neighbor to be in danger. That's evil. That even destroys my body, members of my body, that alcohol, that evil, that substance, that drug, even the bad thoughts, the angry thoughts, the thoughts of hatred that injures me. And so you are ready to eliminate all those sinful practices. And then and you nail your sins to the cross. He died for me. I see him there on the cross. And I nail all, all my evil, all my sin, the small and the great, the imaginary and the real, you nail, nail them to the cross. And then you now, you turn your life fully unto Christ. That's repent. You renounce your sin. You empty yourself of evil. You plead and you pray for pardon. You eliminate sinful practices and then you nail your sins to the cross of Calvary and you turn your whole personality. You turn yourself fully, completely to the Lord after you've done that to say, Lord, 
All those six, I reject. All those six, I remove. I renounce. And now I come to the Lord. I pray. I plead. Save me. I will save you. Faith, you believe, you trust. You have confidence in him. He is the one that promised. And he said, repent. I've repented. I believe. I believe that my salvation is now. My redemption is now. I believe that what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary is enough for me. Salvation will come to you. Redemption will come to you. If you've been claiming salvation, I'm saved, I'm saved. And you have not turned away from sin. I'm saved, I'm saved. You have not emptied your life of sin and evil. The sin on your tongue. That's lying on your tongue. There's evil on your tongue. If you have not emptied your life from sin, you have not repented, don't say you are saved when you're still living in sin. If you have not come to the Lord and you have not prayed, pleading earnestly for the pardon of the Lord, and if you have not eliminated all those evil gangs from your life, evil practices from your life, don't tell anybody you are saved yet. You have not taken all your sins and nailed them to the cross of Calvary. And you have not turned your life, your heart, your mind, everything fully unto the Lord. There's no salvation yet. Repent and believe the gospel. And as you do that, salvation will come. Redemption will come. A new life will come. Eternal life will come. I come to point number two. Point number two here. Reconciliation. Through faith. Toward recovery from all sicknesses. Reconciliation. What's that? When two people turn their backs at each other. Or one is asking, come, let's settle this rift. And let all this manifestation of attacking each other, let it come to an end. And the fellow said, no, no, I'll keep on attacking. That's my way of life. There's no reconciliation there. God is a holy God. God is a righteous God. And the man that lives Contrary to God, turns his back to God. And God is saying, I created you. Why are you going so far away from me? I made you, and I made you for myself. Why are you so selfish and you're living for yourself? You're not even thinking of me, your creator. And why is it on my plea? Through my only begotten son has not made any effect in your life. When you now turn and you say, I now want reconciliation. I want to think along with God. Live along with God. Move along with God. Two cannot work together except they be agreed. I want to come in total agreement with the Almighty God. Reconciled. That's what the Lord wants. Then he says, you're my son, you're my daughter. And you are walking with him in love. You are walking with him in agreement. You are walking with him in fellowship. That is reconciliation. And when that reconciliation takes place, if there's any sickness in your body, any, any sickness, he has the power and he has the willingness. He'll take that sickness away from your body in Jesus' name. Thank God for that lonely amen that is good enough. Everybody. Recovery. You will recover. 
I said you will recover. Yes. You are lying down there, helpless, hopeless, dejected. Good news for you. Yes. Recovery for you today. Yes. It appears that pain is almost rending you apart. Good news, healing has come. You reconcile with the Lord. And in that reconciliation, you'll find recovery. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 18. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18. And all things of God was reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ by Jesus Christ. Now, you need to understand Jesus Christ, he is God. I and my Father are one. He who has seen me has seen the Father. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. He is God. On the other hand, he is man. Because he said, the son of man is come to seek and to save. Now, because he's God, he holds the hand of God. Because he's man, he holds the hand of man. God man god is holy he is holy he holds the hand of god man is sinful the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world he became a substitute identifying for sinful man and then he brings the hand of god and the hand of sinful man brings those two hands together. That's reconciliation. Reconciliation. And as you say, thank you, Lord. You stand for me. You represent me. You are my substitute. I cannot go to God by myself. I am too sinful. He is too holy. And then Christ... God, Christ, man, takes your hand, takes the hand of God, and joins together, you are reconciled. And when you are reconciled like that, sickness will vanish out of your body. I'm going to give you testimony, but if you are going to hear the testimony, you have to give me an encouraging amen. You know, let me tell you, when I stand here and I'm, you know, using all my strength and all my voice and I'm, you know, sweating and all that, and then you are sitting down there, you are not using your voice when you need to use it, you are not using your energy when you used to use, uh, when you need to use it. That's partiality. You are not going to be partial. When I use my voice, you use your voice, we come together and then there will be an explosion of miracle in your life in Jesus' name. It was yesterday, yesterday, yesterday at the Global Crusade here while we were preaching here. And the message was coming forth over here in, uh, remind me the name of a great city here. Yenegoa, Bayelsa State, South South, Nigeria, West Africa, Africa. When the word of God was going on here, it went everywhere all over the world. And it went to Canada. And there was somebody that his sister invited to the location over there for the global crusade. White man, a Canadian, he was blind, blind, blind completely. And then as at the Alpha location, 
You know, go out here. The prayer was going on. I was said the final amen. Lo and behold, in Canada, the blind eyes got open. And he was walking. They said, walk there, walk there, walk there. Miracle. If that happened far away in Canada, it's your turn. Your blind eyes will open. I am happy to announce to you today, you are the carrier of miracle healing tonight in Jesus' name. And of course, you know, that in February, where were, where were we then? February. February Global Crusade. Where was that? What, you think I didn't remember? I was, I was testing you. Whether you remember or not. I remember, you remember. You remember, I remember. When we remember the same thing. What I expect is what you expect. There'll be an explosion of miracle in your life. This boy was having cerebral problem, damage. He couldn't stand. He couldn't walk. They have to be, the parents described it like this. They say, we always turn him as we are turning yam that we are roasting. It was that bad. Six years, it being like that. He couldn't do anything by himself. Anywhere he wanted to go, they have to carry him and then get him there, carry him back. The parents were full-time job on him, moving him about. But they heard of that fabric crusade in Jalingo. Next time is Bayelsa we'll be talking about. And I'm going to take your testimony. I'll publicize it to the whole of the world. But for that February crusade, that child helpless like that. Then we prayed. And then the final amen. That finalizes everything. That cancels everything that takes the hand of the devil away from your life. The final amen. This helpless, invalid boy got up. And then, as they went back home, started walking and started, you know, playing with, um, you know, motorcycle tire. God is at work. Get reconciled unto him. And then your recovery will come from every sickness in Jesus' name. And all things of God was reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Look at verse 19 there. To which that is that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And he has given unto us the word of reconciliation is given that that's why we're calling you tonight you will be reconciled unto God yeah. and as we're reconciled unto God total recovery in your life in Jesus name yeah. look at verse 20 in verse 20 now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us we pray you 
will beseech you, will plead with you, will beg of you, be ye reconciled unto God. And as you come in reconciliation with the Lord tonight, there will be total recovery in your life. Yeah. Everything you have lost, you recover. Yeah. Health, you recover. Yeah. Your good sense of living an abundant life, you will recover. Yeah. The joy of the Lord, you will recover. Yeah. And whatever, whatever you have been asking God for, in all those night vigils, in all those prayer meetings, anywhere, everywhere, you recover tonight. Yeah. I recover tonight. Yeah. Amen in your life. Yeah. Amen in your family. Yeah. Amen for your recovery. Yeah. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three, restoration by faith with redemption by the Savior. Restoration. As we come tonight, and we say, that original thing you had in mind, when you created me, and you put me here on earth, I want to be restored to that original thing. Restoration will come in your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 57, and I'm reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 57, we're reading from verse 18. I have seen its ways. The Lord is watching everyone. And is watching all those who have heard tonight the description of the path, of the road, of the way to redemption. And he's watching everyone. If somebody who ought to repent, who ought to be reconciled, who ought to recover, who ought to retain all that God has said, if that person is just sitting down there, and you don't make progress on the road by sitting down. If that person is hopping by one leg, only face without repentance, you don't travel far by just one leg. But the people who will say, I've seen the road to redemption, the way. To redemption, the express way to redemption. And then I get up, and in my mind, in my heart, I take the step, I repent, I believe, I renounce sin, I trust the Lord, I empty myself of evil, and I hold on to God. I plead and pray for pardon. And I say, God, remember me. I eliminate sinful, evil practices, and I'm holding on to Calvary. I nail all my sins on the cross, and I turn my whole personality onto Christ. And I say, Lord, here I am. The Lord will answer your prayer. Yeah. I have seen his ways. He regrets the sins of the past. He returns unto me. He now refuses all the gifts of the devil. He now rejects and renounces all the offer of the darkness of the world. I have seen his ways is now getting to me reconciled unto me and he says i'll be with the lord forever and ever i have seen his ways i will heal him amen. you missed your amen. amen the lord will heal you 
the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will forgive you. And the Lord will turn your life around. It will be a new life in Jesus' name. I will lead him also. Think about that. When you are saved, the Lord says, I save, I forgive, I heal, then I will lead him also. Can I think about that? Now, Christ will lead you. I said Christ will lead you. He will hold your hand, then he will lead, he will lead, he will lead you. And when Christ leads, he will, lead, he will not lead you to a nightclub. No, he doesn't do that. He will not lead you to a drinking parlor. He doesn't do that. He will not lead you to a gang of liars, a gang of deceivers. He doesn't do that. He will not lead you to the house of the old boyfriend, old girlfriend, to come and mess up together again. He does not do that. He does not lead you to idol worship. He will not do that. He wants to restore you to life completely. And then he leads you now. He leads you in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. And though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. His rod and his staff will comfort you. Yes, he will pour the oil. He anoint your head with oil. Your cup will run over. My cup will run over. My cup will run over. He will set a table before you in the presence of your enemies and all those enemies are changed in Jesus' name. And surely, 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 goodness and mercy. In your marriage, goodness and mercy. In your life, goodness and mercy. In your profession, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And then you will dwell with him in all eternity in Jesus' name. Restoration. Restoration that comes with total faith in Christ. I have seen his ways. I will heal him. When God says I will, there's no one. There's no spirit. There's no power that can turn back the hand of the Almighty God. Tonight, it will heal you. That person you brought there, tonight, it will heal everyone. And I will lead him also. And restore, restore, restore comforts unto him and to all his mourners. The Lord will do it. It's God, he cannot lie. The Lord will do it. And as you come tonight with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and you say, Lord, here am I. I want salvation. I want redemption. I want reconciliation. I want restoration. It will happen in every life in Jesus' name. God is ready. Are you ready? Heaven is ready. Are you ready? Christ, the Savior, is ready to save tonight. Are you ready? And then you remember, we're on the road to redemption. And we have two legs. One leg says, repent. The other leg says, believe. And as you repent, return, and you 
reject every evil way and you say lord tonight i come i come i come forgive me he will forgive you he will save you he will cleanse your sin he will turn your life around even tonight in jesus name are you there are you ready are you willing Do you want to have this thing i've been describing total redemption salvation reconciliation do you want that tonight yeah. let me hear you yeah. praise the lord heads bowed and eyes closed heads bowed and eyes closed redemption is the greatest thing that can happen to you salvation is the greatest thing that can happen to you and as you have heard repent and believe so that that redemption that salvation that reconciliation can come to you tonight anywhere you are raise up that hand and say lord now i understand now i understand and I want to take the road from my mind, in my heart, in my spirit, in my inner man. The road that leads to that redemption and salvation. Lord, I come. Raise up that hand. The Lord bless you real good. Stand up if you are raising up your hand. And you are saying, yes, I take that road. I repent. I believe. And then the salvation of the Lord will come to you. Where are you? Where are you? Raise up your hand and stand up right there. And you tell the Lord, Jesus said, you cannot have this salvation without repentance. You must repent. You must renounce, reject, remove your sin. You must empty, empty your life. Of all those evil things, repent, you can stand up. God bless you there. God bless you there. Over the radio, on television, repent. Renounce sin. Empty your heart, your life of evil. Pray and plead for pardon. Eliminate sinful practices. Nail those sins to the cross of Christ and turn your whole life completely unto the Lord. Stand and say tonight I receive the redemption, the salvation of the Lord, the joy of salvation will come to you. I didn't hear your amen then. The peace that comes with salvation will come to you and the victory that comes with redemption will come to you tonight in Jesus name yeah. keep on standing and praying with you now father in the name of Jesus we well, thank you I will bless your name for the assurance we have that anyone who repents of sin and believes in the Savior will have salvation redemption eternal life everlasting life i pray lord your grace for salvation will come to everyone right now forgive them pardon them renew their lives grant them salvation from heaven confirm each that salvation in every life right now in Jesus name we pray God bless you uh, keep on standing our counselors are there and those uh, counselors will uh, do the right thing with you and they will take your name your particulars it's so that we can follow up on you and help you for the over the radio over the television online everywhere do the same thing as we're doing here and then i'll be coming back there is total healing recovery for everyone tonight in jesus name
our counselors, please help them. Those who have given their lives to Christ, keep on standing. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there by your side. They are there to help you. They will get your name, your address, and how we can contact you. And so give them all that they request from you. And now you have given your life to Christ. You will state everything as rightly as they are. You will not tell them something else that is not true. So tell them exactly what your names are and what your addresses are, how we can contact you. Please do that now. Those of us who have given our lives to Christ online, you're watching online and you just gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, you visit the link that is showing on the screen now and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Again, plus two three four nine one five four four four. 9263. We shall get your particulars and you'll be counted. And so, our counselors, please, can we give all the people attention? Let no one be left out. There will be converts rally for all those who are giving their lives to Christ. That will be coming up next Sunday, that's this coming, this week Sunday, by 3 p.m., it will be taking place, you'll be given the details of that banquet. A pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. Also, on that same Sunday, all the people have given their lives to Christ, there will be a special banquet for us at the various locations stated at the back of your program. And those in Yenegua, you'll be having yours at Deeper Life Campground by 3 p.m. Please don't forget this date. Our counselors will be handing over a package to you as they take your names and your particulars. In that package, you will open it. You have a letter written to you from our pastor describing and explaining these things. Please endeavor to read that letter. We also want you to know that tomorrow by 3 p.m. here, there will be lunch hour with Jesus, and it will be in this university auditorium just behind my left-hand side here. And you go there by that time. Our leaders will be waiting for you there to welcome you. So, counselors, you are there. Attend to everyone. Please make sure nobody is left out. Let me know if we are true. At the left-hand side, far left, please can you raise up your hand? If you are finished, please our supervisors, can you wave your hand? Wave, uh, raise your hand and wave it at me if you have done so, if you are true.
raise it high, wave it at me. God bless you. At the central part here, if you are true with the counseling uh, work, can you raise up your hand and wave it at me? Our supervisors, please check up. Raise up your hand and wave it at me if you are true. God bless you. Please, at the left-hand side here, near le uh, right-hand side, sorry, at the right-hand side here, please, if you are true with your counsel, raise up your hand. God bless you. At the far right, if you are true there, please, the counselors, uh, supervisors, can you help me? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We shall rise up now as our pastor comes to address us and to pray for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I like your clapping. And I will take that with me everywhere I go. Now, now is the time for your healing. Say time for my healing. I was talking to you about the February crusade. There was a sister that had accident. The vehicle some assaulted three times. Lives were lost. But God spared her life. Only that she had fracture, broken bones. And she had gone for x-ray. They had to put collar on her neck so as to keep that neck steady. And then she came to the crusade. She forgot the collar at home. And the head, the neck, remember? Broken neck, broken back. But since she couldn't go back to where she came from, she stayed there. And then we were to pray, like we're going to pray now. Like the power of God is going to reach you right now. As we're praying, she was hearing sound crack, crack, crack. God is setting the bone. And then by the final amen, the crack, 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 everything subsided. Everything was all right. And then that was the night in the night, as this night. And then the following morning, she went to do another x-ray. And everything perfect. Your life everything perfect in your body everything perfect your healing time has come where are you raise up that hand and when you hear the final amen you know that your healing has arrived the amen has welcomed your healing and then you open your eyes and you test yourself and you do what you couldn't do before healing in your life tonight in jesus name yeah. raise up one hand and if you prefer to raise up both hands no problem god accepts everyone and then lay the other hand in the place where you have the disease the challenge the power of the Lord will come through to you right now. Yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. we rejoice in your healing. Yeah. We're happy.
because we know this is the day of healing for everyone and i pray you touch everyone right now in jesus name insanity madness evil spirit i command you come out in jesus name goiter fibroid swelling and yeah i command you come out in jesus name all those moving objects in the body harassing tormenting torturing the life of anyone there i command that spirit tormenting spirit there come out in jesus name pain of sickness anywhere on your chest in your tummy at your back in your bones excruciating pain you have no right to remain there come out in jesus name the voice of the enemy speaking in your ear remove your cloak run out do this do this i silence that voice lord deliver them in jesus name issue of blood blood coming out coming out i mean you're drying up i command that blood to stop right now be healed in jesus name and also have internal wound internal disorder cancer ulcer whatever lord i pray in your love in your compassion in your mercy lay your hand on them right now heal them in jesus name <laughs> blindness i command that blindness there Amen. come out in jesus name Amen. receive your sight Amen. blind eyes be open Amen. and begin to see in jesus name Deaf ear be open. Amen. Dumb tongues be loosed. Amen. And I pray the healing virtue of the Lord will flow to your body right now. Amen. You will hear. Amen. You will speak. Amen. Everything will be all right in your life. Amen. Confirm it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. That short leg. I command that short leg to grow out and be equal with the other in Jesus' name. Amen. Arthritic, pain in your joints, get out in Jesus' name. Amen. And you will rise up and walk normally. Those who are lame, those who are paralyzed, I pray the hand of the Lord will touch you right now. And the power of his resurrection will walk in your life and you'll stand and you'll walk walk straight with your two legs in jesus name broken bone join together lord heal them everywhere now to the right to the left to the front to the center to the back to the radio to the television and online miracle Amen. healing Amen. deliverance Amen. and the joy and the assurance that we have got each one our miracles Amen. it is done Amen. for you it is done Amen. For you there, it is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 
I have seen his ways. I will heal him. I will lead him also. And I will restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. It is done in every life in Jesus' name. Yeah.